I'm here in St. Juliet's Church on a Saturday afternoon. The sun is shining. It is one of the most beautiful days I've, I've seen this year. Uh, it's got to be the hottest day. And I'm here on behalf of Camelford.org to highlight a leaflet that's been going through letterboxes throughout the town of late from friends of St. Julieta's Church. We decided to support this uh, action and so we came down to take some film. What we didn't know at the time was that there was a flower show on today. So coupled with finding out interesting parts of the church, we're also going to get, show some nice pictures of some of the displays inside the church. Standing here at a stone monument, which is, uh, believe it or believe it not, is quite um, unique. And over here is another one. Uh, this one, we think, dates back to the 11th century. Um, there are five altogether in this church. And, um, they look pretty bad, but it's worth having a, a trip down here to visit. Now, very fortunate, I don't know much about this particular part of the world, so I've got John with me today, and he's going to talk us through some of the interesting aspects of the church interior and exterior. Here we are. This is John, one of the friends of Lamb Teglos, who's going to take us inside and show us some of the inter interesting aspects of this particular church. Also, we'll probably take some pictures of the um, flowers that are on display. Now okay, John, tell me about this, uh, well, this lovely old church. Yes, it dates back to Norman times. Uh, at least one of the walls is Norman and uh, then it's got several stages of development. Uh, the 15th century was a very important time of expanding the church and the, this aisle on the, the right-hand side uh, was extended. Okay, let's look at some interesting aspects. What about the font? This is the font. Right. You said there was a design on this. Oh, there is, yes. It's uh, covered over for the flower festival. Uh -huh. But underneath, uh -huh. you can see that there are some swirly-whirly signs. If there's one with three, and here is one with four, if you can see and that. Do we know what those were for? Well, uh, we think they're very early symbols, and they're reflected elsewhere in the church. Oh. So we'll go and have a look at those, shall we? Yeah, we're now at the rear of the hall, of the church hall, and um, I came upon this horse, was intrigued, but John says there's something else behind. What was that? Yes, this is a very important memorial to the Wallace family, and the great, 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 great grandson of the person uh, commemorated there. 1560 he was buried there? Well, yes. So his great, the... great grandson? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Uh, he was one of the very first circumnavigators of the world. Really? And he discovered Wallace Island, Easter Island, and Tahiti. There you go. I mean, piece of history being in the making here in Camelford. Yep. Okay. Um, we've now reached the chancel of the church by the altar. And John, why is it significant on this wall? Well, this wall is the oldest bit of the church. It dates back to Norman times. So it's an indication of just how old the church is and how long it's been here. And there is talk about there having been an earlier church as well. They, is it, those windows seem rather plain to me. Well, on top, if you look very carefully, you will see three small um, diamond-shaped pieces where um, they've got some coloured glass in. And we think that it's almost certainly very old probably 15th century. Yes, I can see it. And these designs on, on the window here, the, particularly the one at the top by the Red Cross, what's that about? Well, that also reflects the same design that was on the font. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that it uh, dates back to very early times, probably one of the earliest symbols that there ever was, and uh, is um, symbolic of the universe. 
And the ceiling is, well, rather old, isn't it? And again, the look, there appears to be some more symbols. Yes, each of the bosses up there has a symbol on, and quite a few of the symbols on the bosses are actually that swirly sign, which dates back to very early times. I'm told this is the newer part of the church. How new? Well, it's newer in the sense that it's 15th century as opposed to Norman. 15th century as opposed to Norman. Well, it certainly stands up. I do like those windows, and I do like those um, figures in the window. Yes, those um, windows right at the very top with figures in. Uh, that's very old glass. Again, it's 15th century, and it survived uh, the Reformation. And in actual fact, there's not just this window, those windows over there, and does it go further down? Yeah, it goes further down, and uh, it's said that they're the same design, or possibly the same artist, as um, some of the windows in Exeter Cathedral. Well, I think this is probably a church I'd like to come back to. Um, and I think some of the people in Camelford would probably like to come down knowing something of the history of it now. Um, but like I said at the beginning of this video, a leaflet is going through doors throughout Camelford asking for your suggestions. Well, I think now um, we're going to go. So thanks, John. Thanks for everything, letting us know about this beautiful church and, of course, the flowers that we've filmed and shown in this video. Um, and uh, hopefully the residents of Camelford will uh, complete these slips and hand them back to Friends of Lanteglos Church. Thanks yes. again. That's a pleasure. Thanks.